Hello, thank you for watching this video where I'm going to show you how Connection Center works with ServiceNow to automate the process of creating incidents from SCOM alerts. But first, a quick overview of Connection Center. So Connection Center is all about connecting SCOM to various places, from ITSM tools such as ServiceNow to messaging tools such as Slack and Teams, and ultimately allowing you to connect to anywhere via webhook so you can do things like push out SCOM alerts and populate CMDBs. Our integration is made up of two components. The first is our management pack, which you import into SCOM. You can see here I've connected it to ServiceNow already here to our production instance. You can configure where you push alerts to, where you receive updates from alerts on, or where you receive maintenance mode requests from in separate places in the management pack. And if I go modify this connection, we'll see what options are available to us. So we put in our ServiceNow details, specify whether we want to use a proxy or not, specify our run as account, uh, which is stored in SCOM standard run as pro uh, accounts and profiles features. We also have a resource pool that underpins this, so SCOM's HA capabilities are enabled. You can choose whether to send SCOM alerts to our ServiceNow certified store app, which we'll come on to in a second, or to ServiceNow's event management module. Using SCOM's standard subscription criteria picker, you can pick which alerts are sent from SCOM for which of your connections. You pick where the configuration is stored, and on the final screen, you're shown a summary. When a connection is set up, you see its state here. We monitor the state of the connection with a SCOM monitor. And going to uh, maintenance mode inbound requests, you can see I've connected my ServiceNow instance to SCOM to accept maintenance requests. You can schedule SCOM maintenance mode from ServiceNow. When an alert is pushed from SCOM, it's evaluated against these creation rules that govern when an incident or task is raised in ServiceNow or not. The first rule that will be hit here is our wait rule, which holds back a SCOM alert for a period of time, in this case one minute, before evaluating it against the other rules. This will handle flapping alerts. We're going to have a look at the SQL team rule here, and the first thing you see is that they contain conditions that must be met for an incident or task to be raised. And in this case, where the criteria are met, we are going to raise an incident, and these are the properties we're going to fill in. If you also have our CMDB population feature of Connection Center, we'll automatically find the correct CI to raise this incident again. On the post creation processing task, there is a script that will allow you to override some of the standard fields, for example, to dynamically map SCOM severity and priorities to ServiceNow's impact and urgency. Full information on this is on our website. On the advanced tab, you have things like the ability to correlate server down alerts for when a server is down and you want to suppress incident creation for all other SCOM alerts received from the server until that server is back up. By default, when a ServiceNow incident is resolved, the SCOM alert that raised it is closed off. You can configure the reverse to be true as well. And in this case, you pick which ServiceNow state the incident should be moved into when the SCOM alert is closed. You have the option to configure advanced options via a script on information that's pushed back through into the SCOM alert. SCOM alert when pushed up from SCOM end up here in the SCOM alerts table and they're matched against the rules when a match is found an incident is raised. Here's an example SCOM alert. You can see we've filled in all of the properties of the SCOM alert from the obvious ones to the not so obvious ones including information about the monitoring object that raised the alert. Also information such as the workflow and the management pack is also displayed here. You can see the creation rule that this SCOM alert was matched against and ultimately the incident that was raised. Here's an example of an incident that was raised. With bidirectional sync in SCOM you get information like the the incident ID, who the incident is assigned to, its state and other pieces of information that you can customise in our ServiceNow store app. You can see from this example here, these two SCOM alerts have been correlated to the same incident ID as both of these relate to the machine being down. You can see from our ServiceNow store app, it is also possible to schedule maintenance mode entries. Here I'm scheduling a maintenance mode entry for this computer between these start and end times, and this is planned maintenance. You can also cancel scheduled maintenance from within ServiceNow and specify who requested the maintenance mode to be scheduled. If you like what you've seen here, go to cookdown.com forward slash connection center where you can take a trial, book a demo or ask us anything. Thank you for watching this video.